on a panel. Jason Rubin was on it. Will Wright was on it. And at one point, Will Wright makes this crazy prophetic comment about that uh, he's looking forward to a game that writes itself as you're playing it and auto adjust and you and the rest of the panel were like, Holy shit. You know, like that kind of blew everyone else's mind. He was, he was absolutely talking. Will was talking about that stuff. Yes. I, it, it's been a long time since I've heard anything from him. I, is, is anyone working on something like that? I know that's the, the kind of the pie in the sky vision. People have uh, well, before. you know, suddenly it becomes very clear how we do this. You know, we, we use AI to do it because it's doing it now. So Will was right. And I think it's going to be, uh, it, it is it is going to transform video games into probably a dangerously addictive uh, but wonderful experience because just um, I mean it it's lucid dreaming you put a headset on if you have a headset you don't have to and it's like oh I want to play a game and it's Star Wars but I want to be Luke and I want um, Princess Leia not to be my sister or she could be your sister until you're a cup of tea. And But I want her to be played by Taylor Swift. Go. And then I want to be able to change the story within these parameters, but I still want it to be about these aspects that is Star Wars. Go. And it, it'll do it. It'll do it in text right now. It's incredible. It, it, why would you ever leave that world? Why would you ever take the headset off at that point? Except to go to work to pay for the power to run the headset. I agree with you. I think it sounds amazing. My only fear is uh, that it can change the experience so much you and I can no longer talk about uh, a narrative story the same way. Like, you know, right now you go play God of War. We kind of have the same shared experience outside that. You know, maybe we approach some puzzles here and there a little bit differently. But that gap between, you know, recommending a game because of what I experienced versus what you might experience. I think will definitely change. It'll change, but I also think just like AI art, people jump to the, I don't maybe it's just we've been conditioned to jump to the worst case scenario, but frankly, I think the sweet spot on this is going to be getting creators uh, that are able to still inject their own sense of creativity and ideas and imagination so that everybody who plays like the future version of Christopher Nolan's new video game or AI experience, whatever they want to call it, everyone's going to get the essence of what he wants you to get. You might get it in different ways, but I think that's where the real art's going to come from. I don't think it's going to just be turn it over to the AI and there's no creativity involved. I think it's just like it's just going to become another tool. So I don't know if I agree with you on that, but it'll be fun to watch. And more importantly, it'll be fun to play. And if it does become either one of those things, I will never come out of virtual reality. You guys, I mean, I was there. I was there. You have to believe me. I'm not lying to you. You guys all know Zork. Fuck Zork for a minute. Remember uh, Sierra Online Games. Okay, this came after uh, Zork. The game was one of these, uh, it was before King's Quest, uh, Sierra Online, they made a Dark Crystal game. This is what it was. Now you can mock it today, fine, but back then, this was state of the art. You would type and then you would get the images. So it's like go north and it would draw this. The villagers tell Jin, blah, 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 right? That was the step up from Zork. Well, where we are now, you can do this and this, but you can change the story in any way the developer wants you to. You can play this on ChatGPT, I have it. Okay, so I want this story to be an Indiana Jones style high adventure where I am playing a very attractive female style Indiana Jones. I am in search of the relic that aliens came to earth millions of years ago and left behind. Uh, which gave birth to humanity. So that's the main story. Can we do a story like that and I play that main character and you're the dungeon master? So it takes a little bit of time, uh, just like the old Sierra games. All right, here we go. This In a world it. tinted with the secrets of a bygone alien. Okay, hang on a second. Before we keep going, I want to do two things. One is I want your replies after you show me the image to only be no more than two sentences. The other thing is make sure that whatever I utilize and do has to be of Earth in the 1940s. I don't want to be able to like make stuff up that didn't exist unless it's from the aliens if we have aliens in the game. Does that all make sense and are you cool with that? Understood. I'll keep my responses concise and ensure any human elements you utilize are grounded in the 1940s reality, while alien aspects can be more imaginative. As you survey the ancient, alien-like entrance, the weight of your mission presses upon you. What's your first move? Look in my backpack and tell me what materials I have with me for this adventure. You find a sturdy rope, a reliable flashlight, 
a journal filled with notes on alien myths, a compact first aid kit, and a set of lock picking tools, ready to use these on your quest. Show me the cover of the book for alien myths that I'm taking notes with. Um, and I can ask it about anything I see in this picture if I want. Um, and you know, it's still early days, but it's pretty Your fun. journal. Check it out. Myths of the Cosmic Ancients awaits your further insights. What's your next step? Can you tell me who wrote this book? The journal is penned by a mysterious author known only as D.R. E. L. Maxwell, an obscure but evidently knowledgeable figure in the field of ancient astronaut theories. Will you follow the leads left by D.R. Maxwell? Show me what the room looks like that I'm in. I need to see all my options before I make a choice. Uh, but let's see what the room looks like. This is fun. It's so fun. And again, it's basic. It'll be real time before you know it. I'll be alive for it. I mean, unless something goes terribly wrong. Yeah, we're not talking 100 years, right? I mean, this is... You couldn't do this last year, or at least the public couldn't. The chamber is alien and mysterious, okay. filled with ancient technology. What is that in the middle of the chamber, Is in the center? Is that like a sphere or a, a headpiece, or it looks like there's a button in the center? What What is it that I'm looking at? Can you give me more information on that centerpiece? The object in the center is a dusty, ancient orb resting on a pedestal, intricate carvings and a single, prominent button hint at its significance and possible activation. Do you dare to interact with it? Hmm. Um, yes, I want to press the button. As you press the button, the orb lights up, emitting a soft, pulsating glow. The chamber begins to hum with energy, the walls revealing hidden doors. Where will you go next? Show me what the room looks like now that I have pressed the button. Has it changed any visually? The chamber is now alive with light and energy. Which doorway will you explore? Is there anything in the book that I have that would give me an indication of what the different doors will lead me to? Oh, I fucked up the talking. God damn it, Jaffe. Okay, so I just broke it. But that was, you get the point, right? 